Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about sketching the derivative of a function when you're given the original function. Um, and I'm going to do two examples here. So, here's my first little example. So the function in blue is going to be our function, our original function, y equals f of x. And what I'm going to try to do here is um, sketch them on the same, the same graph. So my derivative f prime of x, I'm going to do this one in red. <clears throat> okay. Um, usually what I do is, well, first off, the first thing to remember is you can interpret the value of the derivative at any particular x-coordinate as the slopes of the tangent lines on the original, for example. Um, and usually I'll look for a little where my graph kind of peaks out and then where it also bottoms out. So notice at the x-coordinate of 0, if you think about the tangent line, to me the tangent line would look like a horizontal line. So if, if the tangent line is horizontal, that would have slope equal to 0. So what we do is, since we're looking at the x-coordinate of 0, on the derivative we plot the value of the slope of the tangent line. So we're actually going to put, put a point here at 0, 0. So it says at the x-coordinate of 0 on the original graph, the slope of the tangent line was 0. And I'm going to do the same thing for this other point over here. So again, I'm, I'm sorry for my bad graphs. Um, what I'm trying to convey here is at this little dot that I have at the bottom, let's suppose that the tangent line there is horizontal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and put a, um, a dot again at, at 0 to say at this particular x-coordinate the slope of the tangent line on the original graph is 0. Okay, so usually I pick those parts out first. And again, this is going to be a very, you know, a very rough sketch, so um, hopefully you won't pick on it too bad. Okay, trying to erase everything here. To me, um, again, in my bad graph, um, okay, I'm going to graph kind of in between the two, the two red dots. That's the first part that I'm going to graph. And again, for no particular reason, um, I'm picking on this part. <clears throat> Notice that as you move left to right, if you think about the tangent lines on the original graph, the tangent lines, again, I, I believe are going to be all negative until you get back over here where it, it, it flattens out and the tangent line is zero. So remember, if the tangent line is negative, that means it has a negative slope. To me, it looks like if you think about of all the tangent lines, this, this point here in the middle looks like probably that tangent line would be the, the most negative. Okay, so it gets more negative, more negative, more negative, okay, and then it starts becoming more positive until it becomes zero. <clears throat> so at this particular x-coordinate, again, I wouldn't put a dot at zero because that says the slope of the tangent line is zero. Let's suppose this line has a, a slope of, I don't know, negative five, okay? Again, I'm just making a number here. So at the y-coordinate of negative five, for that same x-coordinate, I would put a dot down here at negative 5. So it says for that corresponding x-coordinate on the original graph, the slope of the tangent line is negative 5. And now I'm going to start being a little more crude um, with my approximation. So again, at the top it's 0, so that's why we had a point at 0. As you move to the right, to me it becomes more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative, it being the slopes of the tangent lines. So the graph of the derivative, the y-coordinates are going to become more, uh, more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative until I get to the bottom. And again, for any point, if you look at that, x that point, it says for that corresponding x-coordinate on the original graph, whatever that y-coordinate is, that's the slope of the tangent line. Okay, as I move from this x-coordinate um, over to my, my second red dot that I put on the graph, the tangent lines, whoops, the tangent lines start becoming um, less negative, more positive until they get to zero. So the y values on the derivative are going to get bigger until they get to zero. And now, okay, notice as you move to the right, to me it looks like the tangent lines will just become um, increasingly large. 
So what we're going to do on our, our derivative is just make the y values correspondingly become increasingly large. On Okay, so we still haven't graphed the left portion of the graph. Notice as you move to the left, okay, to me the tangent line um, would be positive. As I move further to the left, the tangent line to me would become more positive, more positive, more positive. So likewise, we're going to make the values on the right, or excuse me, on the left, the y-coordinates on the derivative become more positive, more positive, more positive. Okay, so probably this should look more like a parabola, but um, sorry for my, my, my bad graph. But this would now be the graph of the derivative f prime. One other thing I want to point out here is if you look at the original graph, notice the original graph is increasing from negative infinity up to zero. If you look at the derivative, notice the derivative is positive over that interval. Okay, The y values are all positive or zero. When the original function starts decreasing, what happens to the derivative? Well, when the original function is decreasing, the derivative actually becomes negative for those x-coordinates. Okay, And then again, notice where the blue function, the original, starts increasing, the derivative becomes positive again. Okay, So wherever the original function, f of x, is increasing, um, the y-coordinates, coordinates, uh, of the derivative function will be positive. Okay, so this is, I think if you remember this little rule, these two rules, it'll help you um, kind of tell you if your graph is reasonable or not. So if the function's increasing, the y coordinates of the derivative are going to be positive or above the x axis. And likewise, if the function is decreasing, it says if the function is decreasing, um, the y-coordinates of the derivative will be negative. That is, the derivative will be below the x-axis. Okay, so just a little, I think, trick to keep in mind that may help you out. So let me do uh, one others here. One others, one other. You ever have one of those days? I'm having one of those days. So hopefully my explanation is making sense. I'm going to do... Um, just one other one here. Okay, so again, forgive my bad artistry. Um, I'm going to mark the x coordinates here at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. The y coordinates will be the same positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. Again, probably not to scale negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so suppose I've got a little, um, maybe a little kind of sawtooth function. So suppose at negative 3, I put a dot up here at 1. So I probably don't need all these units. And suppose at negative 2, so let me put my, my graph again, the original, um, in blue. Suppose it goes from negative 3, positive 1, to negative 2, positive 0. And then it goes back up to the value of negative 1, positive 1. And then it goes back to 0, 0. Then up to positive 1, positive 1. Um, 2, 0. And then 3, 1. OK, so that's going to be my function f of x. That's going to be the original. And I'm going to graph the derivative in red here, just like in the last one. A couple things that are important, and we're going to make use of one of these things. Um, it turns out that the derivative um, does not exist when one of the following three things happens. Um, if there's a break or a hole um, in the original function f of x, it's going to turn out that the derivative doesn't exist there, so if it's not continuous. Um, if the tangent line is vertical, so straight up and down, and again, the derivative represents a value. Remember we say the slope of a tangent line that's vertical has undefined slope, so that's why um, that's the case. And then the other thing that actually happens, it says that any sharp 
um, points. They usually call them cusps. At any point or cusps, the derivative also doesn't exist. And there's a, there's a technical reason for that, but we're going to make use of this property when I graph it because it looks like to me there's a lot of sharp points in my graph at kind of the tops and the bottoms. So we're going to have to incorporate that into our derivative graph. Okay. So, but I want to point these other two out as well, just so you're aware of them. Okay. Again, obviously there's a reason for all of it, but um, I'm not going to go into to depth here. Okay, let's think about what happens on our graph. Okay. So I'm going to graph slopes of tangent lines. Um, derivatives won't exist at endpoints. There's a technical reason for that as well. But if you look at any x-coordinate between negative 3 and negative 2, if you think about the slope of the tangent line, well, if I pick any point, to me the slope of the tangent line would look exactly like the, the line itself. Well, we could compute the slope of the line by doing the change in y over the change in x. Well, it says you go down one unit over one unit, so the slope of any tangent line over this little segment would have value negative one. Likewise, it, on the parts where it's increasing, um, again, this is supposed to be a linear function. If I were to take any point and look at the slopes of the tangent lines, now I'm going up positive one unit over positive one unit, so where it's decreasing, the slopes of the tangent lines would be negative one and wherever it's increasing the slopes of the tangent line would be positive one. So what that means is the value of the derivative is going to alternate between negative one and positive one because that's the only values that the slopes of the tangent lines um, take on. So at negative three again endpoints can't be anything so over here at negative three I'm going to put an open circle and this should be at the same height as negative one and then the slope of the tangent line between the x-coordinates of negative 3 and negative 2, it stays negative 1. So it stays negative 1, stays negative 1, stays negative 1, stays negative 1. But when I get it 2, because of this little technicality that I talked about earlier, the derivative at this point doesn't exist. So it's actually undefined, and we make an open circle there. Okay, so now between um, the next set of x-coordinates where it, it's increasing, Okay, so let me um, kind of get rid of some of the clutter here. Well, now on the derivative, again, it doesn't exist, but once I get past that x-coordinate of negative 2, the slopes of the tangent lines become positive 1. So I'm going to put an open circle again because the derivative doesn't exist at this point, but then the slopes of the tangent line are positive 1, positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. Again, I'm at a sharp point, so I would put an open circle on the derivative. Okay, so imagine the blue one not being there. It would be open circle, open circle. And then it says the tangent lines, again, have slope of negative 1. So now my function would bump back downstairs. And then it's going to become positive. It's going to do the same thing. Um, at positive 1, it'll turn negative again, the derivative. And then from 2 to 3, again, it'll be positive. So not a, not a pretty, um, such a pretty graph here. But... Um, so sorry about that. But this is the basic idea when you sketch derivatives. So in this case, the only value the derivative would ever take would be either positive 1 or negative 1, again, because the tangent lines either have slope negative 1 or positive 1. Okay, so again, roughly, your graph would look something like just a little jump function. It's kind of jumping back and forth. Um, whoops. And then it would jump jump, um, jump. Okay, so that would be the graph of the derivative um, if you got rid of the blue part. So, all right, I think this is kind of a tricky, um, in my experience it seems like uh, students, and I know I was at one point, get confused about this, so I hope my explanation wasn't um, overkill. Um, likewise, I hope it made sense. So, again, I think these tend to give people some trouble, so I think my 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 word of advice would be just to take your time, think about slopes of tangent lines on the original graph, and then again, whatever the slope of that tangent line is, that's where the, the that's the y value on the, the derivative graph. So, all right, I hope this makes some sense, and good luck out there.